Welcome to the Forking Healthy podcast, a place where two sisters have cheeky chats about everything natural health and wellness. I'm your host, Jenny Soder. I am also your host, Cheryl Berecki. Together, we hope to inspire, entertain, and motivate you with our knowledge and decades of experience in the natural health and fitness industry. So if you're ready, let's get Forkin' Healthy. Hi. Hi. <laughs> My fancy um, microphone is packed. <laughs> oh, I was thinking there was something missing in the picture, but it's been so long since I've joined you in the studio. I know, in your closet. Um, I'm surrounded by chaos in my house. <laughs> we like chaos. Yeah. So mine's silent chaos. Yours is not <laughs> silent chaos. No, no. So for the viewers out there, you may hear some banging. It's not Listeners, anything not I can viewers. Consider. What do you viewers, want? Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Audio. Um <laughs> Plumbers are here, drywallers are here, siding people are here. It just never stops at our house right now. And for the listeners, I'm in the season of chaos <laughs> where I've been up since 5 a.m. because I'm now a homeschool teacher, oh. full time, <laughs> single mother, business owner, and dater. Wow. <laughs> I got multiple portfolio. titles. Yeah. yeah. It it's happening. I'm doing it, I'm juggling it. And today we're talking about travel because hopefully <laughs> let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I can fit some bloody plane travel in this year. Yeah. Can I start with the fast five here? You can. Are you ready? Yes. All right. What do you love the most about plane travel? Uh, the fact that I can take a nap and get up and I'm in somewhere totally different. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And alternatively, what do you love or what do you hate? the most about plane travel how long it takes <laughs> it's a long nap it's a long long nap <laughs> okay here's where you and I differ how far in advance do you pack for your plane trips at least a week usually about 10 days <laughs> so I start up my process is I have one room that I put this the like um suitcases in and bags and then I work my way around the house in each room. So I will go through here. I will clean, organize, and then start putting things into that room. You can tell you do not have children for the fact <laughs> that a week ahead, you would have a room yeah. clean and it would stay clean. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. What's the funniest thing you have brought through security or on the plane? Oh, so when I was doing bio scans in Winnipeg and I was on the plane, it's not that it's funny, but it's a funny reaction when you open. And so for those of you that don't know, when you do a bio scan, I have multiple, like hundreds of different vials that contain a single serving of a, of a supplement. So there's literally like 200 glass vials of supplements and they're like um I'm not sure what to do with this I thought you were gonna say samples of hair no no I didn't bring the hair hair is at home and destroyed at this point okay lastly if you had to if you had to you were in a jam because I know you probably never get into this jam but if you had to buy one food item on the plain menu what would it be that's literally on my, on my fast five. Um, I think it would be like a crackers and cheese situation. Nice. I yeah. knew it would be like a char charcutier board or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, here we go. What portion of your carry on is food? <laughs> uh, 50%. 50. I thought yeah. it would be higher than that. No, because I guess Jason, I have toys. Jason <laughs> cause he has, he has his toys and now he has a laptop because he homeschools. So now Ooh. we have two laptops. So we have right. like this big laptop electronics. Thing. Yeah. And then, and then food, but before it probably was 75% is in his yeah. age, we've been able to uh, go down a little bit. What is the weirdest thing that you bring on the plane? <laughs> Um, well, I would have to say that I just most recently, I, I bring some weird things, I guess, to other people. 
but um most recently I carried blocks of silver with me <laughs> off right, from right. your house home <laughs> and security stopped me and similar to your reaction with the bioscan uh, vials I got pulled aside because it got scanned and they were like what is this <laughs> and then I got pulled aside and she was like this and I have these wrapped up blocks of silver that I brought bought from my brother-in-law like we conglomerated <laughs> together and bought and I, she was I was like is this it's just silver what's the big deal and she <laughs> she just didn't even know what to do right okay here's a peddler she's bringing across <laughs> silver what is this yeah so it's some weird like thing bricks of cocaine would be a little yeah. bit different, but <laughs> silver um your favorite plane or airport food if you're not prepared <laughs> um well i'll switch and i won't do the plane because i would have a similar answer to you maybe i would pick the hummus and veggies or whatever then nothing really feels fulfilling on that list to me yeah. but i would have to say i seek out like um and because we'll we'll touch on this later but like like a juice bar like a juice smoothie right. something in the airport it seemed to be something that i can you can kind of find in most airports yeah um, some of them better than others i'm not typically talking about a booster juice everybody right. i'm typically talking about a little more like organic -y and local or whatever you can do but Fresh, i'll even friends. deal yeah. with booster juice if i need to yeah <laughs> Um, have you ever had a decent snack or a meal on the plane from an airline? Yes, actually, um, you, overseas, like really mm -hmm. far overseas. And I recall uh, one of my trips to Southeast Asia and being on, um, I want to say it was Qantas. I could be mistaken, but you, we were flying through Korea and I had a really cool Korean breakfast meal uh, oh. once. Yeah, that was like kimchi style, nice. um, like cold noodles, and it was pretty neat. Awesome. Um, okay, ready? Last one. What is the one thing a new partner would bring on the plane or someone you're dating? I was going to put someone you're dating, but they are like, why am I going away with them? Um, that would make you cringe. Oh, that they would bring on a plane? Yes. Oh, I don't, is there anything that would make me cringe that they could bring on a plane? Like a meatball oh. sub or something? Oh, <laughs> yeah. What is a hat? I would have to say that um, it would actually drive me nuts if they were buying like bottled water. Just oh, bring okay. the goddamn bottle with you and right. empty it. Why? Or, or no water. That drives mm -hmm. me crazy when people, I mean, this isn't dump worthy. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> it's not like the corn dog situation. Okay. <laughs> but I have to say that like the whole water situation drives me a little bit nuts. Like it's not that difficult. Pour the water out at one edge of security and yeah. then deal with it on the other end. I do buy bottled water in the airport. You buy I, plastic water bottles? Well, I empty it into my water bottle as okay. soon as I can, but like I am not risking like airport water. Yeah, but why don't you use your little sticks in your bottle? Not good enough. So oh, gross. a lot yeah. of snob. <laughs> why is it the meatball sub? I can't get on that. Now a meatball sub. Pizza would drive me crazy too. Were you eating something laden with fat and that's digestively so terrible before you get on a plane? I think if someone brought like a Costco size bag of chips and they were eating it next to me, I would go <laughs> nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Good, Good point. Good yeah. point. <laughs> Something really smelly would actually pro like tuna. A tuna yeah. can. <laughs> I know someone that brings like sardines and tuna on the plane. Okay, that's a bit much. I do bring backup oysters, I have to say, because they're easy, but like opening that on a plane would not be something <laughs> I'd do unless it was an emergency. Right. Okay, oh. let's dive in. Okay. So Tell me why you feel that prepping to stay healthy is so important when you're traveling. Um, well, duh, like plane and airport food. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. I just think it's gotten so much worse. Like when I reflect to the days where I started traveling at like 18, like you could rely on plane food then. Like, do you remember when you act like it wasn't actually that long ago where you could actually pick. And when I would do long travel internationally, I could actually pick that I was dairy free and gluten free. 
Yeah. And I would get in my international flights, something half decent where I could at least pick it apart. Right. right. Those days are so bloody like long gone. And also this new um, layer or multiple layers of ridiculous travel is that we have so many delays. I think nothing right. is guaranteed anymore. And it makes me think of the statement that I use to so many of my clients all the time is like, um, fail to plan. Like if you fail, if you fail, if you fail to plan it, you're going to fail. Yeah. And it's just another situation where there's so many unknowns. It's just exacerbated, um, you know, in a, in a way, just like life happens, but now you're in this like really, um, you know, forced uncontrolled yeah. environment. And yes. so yes. what are you going to do? And I really like to take the, uh, like plan ahead, preventative plan B, plan C, plan D, um, you know, approach. I don't need a child who's hangry. I just right. don't. <laughs> and so it's like food is so key for us and, and having tools to address our health are so key that I have to plan ahead. What about you? Why is it so key for you? You know, and, and I think of it in a different way is that I think a lot of people are just not aware of the extra added stress that the body goes through when they do Ooh, travel. And mm -hmm. so, you know, things like the toxic load that you're in, like ingesting and inhaling that diesel air, the EMFs on the plane and around you when you're flying that high, um, digestive stress, just from the pressure of going up and down and in the cabin, the fact that you're sitting down all the time, so many different things that I think some people don't think about, like it's not a normal day. And so it's even more important that you're extra careful about the things that you eat, you drink during that day. Good one. Good one. And then, so like, tell our listeners, like, what is your approach to eating while traveling? totally different than yours. <laughs> yeah. And so I am, when I travel, I fast. So I liquid fast. Um, and that's mainly because I, you know, I've had digestive issues in the past when you are fasting, you are, your body has extra time because it's not digesting to like deal with that extra load that it, your body is being, um, put under. And so when you are digesting and you know, the plane is going in, the plane is going out, that pressure is there is going to, um, you know, so many people get constipated though, or have digestive issues like gas and bloating after I basically am fasting from like that. I usually don't even eat like in the morning. We usually take morning flights for this reason. And so, uh, we'll always choose earlier on in the day, we will, um, I'll get up, have like tea, stuff like that. And I will have like, um, I'll bring, no, I, I think I'm late. I'm noting down below what the top foods are bring. So I won't even <laughs> mention what I bring, but I just have, and then I break my fast when I land. So yeah. that will be my first meal of the day. Yeah. And, and that's very different to you correct? Yeah. Yes. And no, I mean, I do, I do adjust based on, um, a few par parameters, right? Like it obviously depends on how long you can be traveling for. Like, yeah. you know, one of our last big ones was, was in Indonesia. Like that was totally, even though it's 30 hours of travel. So that right. would be a little <laughs> bit different than my approach to just, you know, coming to Ontario this past summer. Typically though, like some things that I'm thinking about are, uh, I have a tendency to dr be drawn towards night flights or actually midday flights. And the reason is that I actually like to move before or after if it's a possibility. So if it's a shorter flight, and when I say shorter, you know, I'm talking like five hour type flight. I like to, I prefer to wake up early and get a workout in, even if it's a small strength session, maybe a small little run or plan for something after. So I'm always thinking about that when I'm booking. Um, I'm really trying to focus on steps. So I'd be known for like, pacing in the airport quite frequently um before i get on the planes i'm very conscious of the fact that sitting for long periods of time is extremely uncomfortable for me and my body and then as far as uh the eating goes that supports that i typically will fast in the morning as well um as opposed to like more um, I do focus on easier to digest. So I'm, I am more prone to move towards liquids, but things like smoothie based, um, I'm not, and like 
easier to digest proteins and lower calorie for sure, because I know that I don't need those calories that I typically would when I'm moving a lot in my day. I like to move around my travel because I know it makes me feel good. Okay. It also helps me promote like me to stay on track as far as my bowel movements and though my energy levels and those sort of things. So I prioritize protein still, but easy to digest staying in the lower calorie zone. You know, what bugs me this next part here is like, cause I often will post pictures. I know you do too, about like, before we travel, like this is what I'm taking. Yeah. That's probably the biggest like setup and packing piece is the food that, you know, and then the, the health kind of tools that I take is the biggest uh, packing time frame, like thing that takes me. And people are like, you bring that on a plane or you can even check yeah. that in your luggage. Like it, there's so many myths around what you can and cannot bring specifically across security. Yeah. Don't you agree? Yeah, I agree. And so, um, you know, I have bring brought anything from like pasta. If we're going to an Airbnb, we'll bring like brown rice pasta. I'll bring honey, meat sticks. I always have <laughs> meat sticks with me. And so, you know, maybe the dogs just don't, aren't trained on my meat <laughs> sticks to like sort them out. But really there are a lot of misconceptions. You can, you can pretty much bring anything on the plane if you consume it. Yeah. Except for the one thing that I got taken away that I really didn't think I was going to get taken away was hummus. They, it was really? too lick. Yeah. It was, they defined it. Cause obviously liquids, y- yeah. you can only bring a certain amount. So that's the part that you have to be conscious of. Right. So I stay away when I'm prepping my food from liquid they deemed my hummus to be t- liquid and I know like really it was homemade hummus so maybe it was a little too watery mm-hmm. but it was too big so right. I could have still brought the hummus if I would have been more conscious of the amount yeah. which is like we won't get into this but it's the stupidest security thing ever. right yeah but uh <laughs> like okay um but a lot of people think that um, you can't bring fruit and veggies, which is like, mm-hmm. I would say the, like such a huge portion of what I bring. And, um, people think because it's produce and when you go in the land border, remember people were talking about plane travel here. Um, and we're talking about lots of things that you can consume on the plane. Yeah. Yes. There is the possibility that you can't bring that fruit and veggie into the new country once you get to customs. Mm-hmm. But I tell you people, I plan appropriately so that all that food is consumed <laughs> on the plane. Or share with friends. Or I just, <laughs> I've been known to get, there were some kids crying on the last flight from Ontario. And I was like, hey, would, they were hungry yeah. and they were waiting because yeah. we were stuck on the tarmac and yeah. they were waiting to order from the menu. And I offered them food because we had like so much yeah. and they were so thankful. And there's also some waters that you can bring now through security. So Kangen water, they have like bags of water and you can bring that through. So cool. Which I'm definitely going to do so that I don't have to buy water bottle. Yes. Good one. And then in your luggage, like when it comes to, if you're, uh, it's the unknown, like obviously I wouldn't be packing hummus on a long flight because it's not going to be very good, but like literally can put anything in your luggage minus firearms people. Like, come on, (laughs) you know, like, And a lot of people, one of the main questions I get are, do you bring your essential oils on the plane? And I do. Um, They're small. I always do because they're small or 15 mils is like the largest bottle, but you can have up to like hundred mils in one kind of container or that fits in there. Supplements, I bring them in checked luggage. Um, Generally um, in certain countries, they are a little bit sticky if they're packaged or out of the package, but I I have honestly never had issues. I bring them in a tackle box all the time. Nothing is like (laughs) labeled. Um, And I've never had issues. Now, when we're doing a major move and I'm bringing 42 bottles, I'm not going to empty like a lot of white powder into it and bring it over the border. And we should probably uh, set an asterisk here to say that we're not giving guaranteed advice based on every single country in the world. So if you get, you know, dogged down by the sniffer. Yeah, don't (laughs) don't give them our podcast link. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But what we're saying here is when it comes to security and check luggage, there's a lot of myths. And you need either ways around. And, And this will help us dive into our last little bit 
I want to hear about your favorite foods. So my top five foods, I, I think I had to put six tools. No, I put five. No. Yeah. Five meat sticks. Number one. Of course. Yeah. And those will always be paleo Valley. They're grass fed. They're not like the dry jerky where you need to be dehydrated. You need to suck up all your water in order to kind of chew and swallow that. Amazing. Um, tea and honey. So peak tea. I love it. You know, you just, it dissolves. You don't need to fumble with a tea bag. You can get like, I have to go kind of wetter spoons, raw honey that you just squeeze in there, mm-hmm. um, organify superfoods. So anything, because I fast, I always bring the powders, you know, the greens, the reds, you know, pure digestive blend, add that to any water, hot, cold, anywhere, um, electrolytes. Cause when we travel, we need extra minerals when we body is in stress. And so we pump through those and, um, chips, <laughs> I usually break my fast on the drive to our place with chips. <laughs> nice. Nice. Mine's twofold. So I bring like main things and then I bring backup things because the backup is like, Oh crap. We're in a jam. We have a delay. We have yeah. a whiny child, whatever. And so backups are usually my things that are packaged. And this is where I like say like to pizza clients, pops. <laughs> this is where I say to clients, now's the time to sway towards more packaged foods for yes. some of these more emergency things. And the two things are like, pr- like good quality protein bars. So like yeah. go macro or RX bars, those sort of things as, uh, as go-tos if you're in a jam. And the second thing is I love the roasted lentils or roasted chickpeas that you can get from three farmers. It really small, really compactable. Don't have to worry about those two things. And those are great, um, emergency backups. And then, um, I actually love going on nutramarket.ca and finding like the new cool thing Mm -hmm. that's packaged as well. We like to bring like those oatmeal kind of mixes because, they come in like little packs. You can um, find like there's a like a, a Elizabeth, a purely Elizabeth has yeah. like a collagen one right now. And you just add water. It's like so easy. You can get on mm-hmm. the plane. Some of them already come in cups or we bring a little collapsible sort of bowls, those dog bowls from the dollar store. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've brought those before. And those like oatmeal mixes are really good macro balance and they're just easy. And then my, um, I would say like, I do also bring powders, uh, similar to you, greens, powder, protein, powder, collagen, powder. I just find them easy to throw into things. Mm -hmm. And then, um, lastly, we always pick up some coconut water on the other side of security, um, for a hydration, like big hydration piece. Nice. Nice. Um, what about tools? Did, did you find it harder to list your like top five tools or your top five? Well, foods? for me, foods are easy because like I had a whole bunch, I knew you were going to stay meat sticks. So yeah. then I knew I could cross them <laughs> off, right? And so I, I had some, I always have extras, you know, I let you have um, the protein bar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, tools, like I, I could still find them because there are things that are really, uh, really important for me for tools. And that is um, one, a sleep. So earplugs, hands down, and an eye mask are like mm, really funny. important uh, for me because sleep, I can't be distracted with noise and light. And so that is really important. I always bring a lacrosse ball because I actually get um, really uncomfortable with all the sitting. Mm. And so sitting on the lacrosse ball and my glutes, my hamster, like roll, people look at me funny. I'm like, I was moving and sitting and like, um, that's really important for me because it makes me more comfortable when I sit. Um, and then I, I never forget earbuds and actually extra earbuds because who I have had earbuds bust or get lost. Um, so I was bring two sets of, um, headphones because audio, I like love listening to audiobooks and that it, you can listen to then like some, you know, really calming beats or affirmations or something like that, like can really calm you, especially if you get anxiety on flights. Um, so those things really, and then I also had down, which you had in there, I always have extra teas. So it could be anything from like a Sienna laxative tea to help with my bowels to a chamomile tea, um, just 
a variety to support. And then lastly, my supplements, like those are hands down, just those key ones, you know, digestive enzymes, um, those things, probiotics, those things that I, I know I need to stay on routine. Yeah. Nice. You totally different. Um, so I always, well, I'm always traveling with my family and they're all, they all get motion sickness. So the number one thing that always I have on hand is something that we call the barfy roller. So (laughs) it's a combination of ginger and digest and essential oil. They roll it behind their ears. They put it on their wrists um, and they're huffing it and no one has puked since they, we started using that. Nice. Um, also as a backup, um, homeopathic Dr. Highlands has a homeopathic motion sickness, mm. um, pa- a tablet that really works well. In fact, we were in Greece once and we were on, we call it the barf boat. It was literally a, a boat that took us to the islands and everyone, everyone on the boat was barfing around me. Nice. Um, Mike held it together, thankfully, because of that, uh, those tablets, I always bring a, like, it's a big scarf, but more like a Turkish towel now is what I bring. So I use that as a blanket, as a bolster, as a towel. So it's very versatile. Um, if you're, you know, I, I need my temperature, like I, being cold on the plane is the worst. Cause then my stomach cramps up and I'm shaking and that type of thing. Um, I always bring a hydrating mist for my skin because my face gets super dry. And so I have a few that I turn to, um, during flights. And then, um, for me, I have a calming roller just so I'm calm so that I'm not worrying about the people that might be barfing. And so I use essential oils. That's probably one thing I cannot get on a plane without because it helps so much to kind of, um, support the immune system and nervous system and so on. And then my last is music as well. So binaural beats and anything that's calming so that it kind of makes the time go by quickly. Very good. So tell us all, when's your next plane trip? Um, Wow. I believe this, by the time this goes out, I should be, yeah, I should be packing up and ready to go. Mexico, here you come. Mexico, here I come. You? Sweet. Mexico? <laughs> Hopefully, Mexico, here we come to visit you. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, pack her up. Safe flying, everybody. Safe flight. Adios. Ciao. Thank you for tuning in to the Forking Healthy podcast. If you want to stay up to date on future podcasts, make sure you follow us on Spotify and subscribe to our YouTube channel. In order for us to get into more ear holes, we would love for you to take a moment to share this episode or leave us a review. That's it for now. Fork and rights.